Good morning, YouTube. Please forgive the glare on my glasses because I have not yet figured out my lighting situation. So I had to leave the window wide open so I have some natural light here. It's not so dark for me to record and that you don't see all of this shadow. But so, welcome to today's video. It's gonna be a quick one, small little project that I had in the back of my head for at least a month or so now. But the reason why I finally decided to do this little project is because it is finally time to update or upgrade the exhaust So essentially all we're going to do is unclip the harness to the sound module that's creating this fake engine noises that plays on your speakers when you're either in sport mode for the SIs or sport mode slash R mode for the Type R's. By the way, huge shout out to the Reddit community, the Civic Type R subreddit there. I made a post or a thread about three, four days ago, and I've had well over a hundred comments of people giving me suggestions, giving me insights on different exhaust systems. I initially stated that through my research on YouTube, Facebook, all of the different forums and local groups that I narrowed down the three most popular exhaust setups that I've at least seen or saw online. The first one being the AWE Touring Edition uh, over the Track Edition, just because the Track Edition was a little bit too loud and droning, which made sense it's for the track. The second most popular system was the HKS Liga Max or the Spec, Spec L or Spec 2 or something like that. A little bit more on the tame side, but also a solid choice. It has a nice deep tone to it. And the third was a tie between two. It was either the Tomei Type D or the NVIDIA R400 or Q300 leaning towards the Q300 just because the R400 had a lot of drone issues and just by looking at the trend if you were to look at uh, your Facebook marketplace you have a lot of fellow members trying to sell their R400s and I believe it's because of the drone. Shout out to a few of the other members that went above and beyond gave me new resources different platforms that they order from that can ship locally without having to worry about duties and taxes and all that stuff so thank you guys I think I finally narrowed it down. I put my foot down. I'm gonna probably go with the Remus exhaust with the black chrome tips because that carbon tip is just a little bit too expensive. It retails for about 800 thousand. I think it was just for the tips alone, the carbon tips, and they look great, but that's just too much money. So we'll see. Stay tuned for that in the future. Without further ado, let's go ahead with this install and um Okay, so what we'll need for this video is eight millimeter socket and a Phillips head screwdriver. Okay guys, so we are in the passenger seat as you can see. We have the glove box over here. I will show you quickly where the um, bolts and the screws are. So you have a total of two eight millimeter bolts and four Phillips head screws. So your bolts are here. You're in your top left here. There's one bolt. And the other one you can't quite see until you get the glove box off. And for your screws, you have your first one right there. Second one. Third one and your fourth one. 
So first step is to pinch the corners, this corner, that corner simultaneously, and the glove box will drop on its own, and then you can go ahead and remove it. Um, having better access to your screws and your bolts, and we'll go from there. Okay, so here we go. The squeeze here. Easy as that. Now if I remove my leg, boom. So I'm gonna remove this and get closer and see what we're working with. To remove the glove box, sorry for the wire here, it's in the way. That is the wire for my dash cam. Anyways, we have our two eight millimeter bolts. First one is here, one. Second one is right here. Uh, let's see if I can go quick zoom so you guys can see. Just right there. Ta -da. So let's go ahead and remove our two eight millimeter bolts. I have my eight millimeter here. Off, keep it to the side. Other side now. Keep that on the side. Now we'll get to our Phillips. First one off. Second one off. So next step is to get this panel off right here. I started here at the bottom just because it's easier. You can hear those clips go. Oh, there you go. Little prying. If you had a pry tool, that would be okay. Or we just use our fingers. And there you go. You have your four tabs or your, sorry, six tabs. You have one. You have one, two, and then three, four, five, six. Now that you have this exposed, it'll be easier to get this whole housing um, off or this plastic off. I'd like to start here with this tab. And I'm just gonna slowly pull and pry off the other tabs. Inside right here. There you go. You don't need to remove this light here, the glove box light. As you can see, as you can see in here, just one more clip. The whole assembly will now go. So the part that we're looking for is right here. This little silver box. And you can see the clip that we have to unclip. Try to zoom it in. There you go. So that right there is the module that's creating that fake sound and this is the clip that we need to remove. So now that I have the phone down, um, it might feel like a struggle to pull this tab off or this harness off but there is a little tab up top that you press down on. I have to press down like this and it should come out easily. So right here, little tab, press down. And it comes right off. And there we have it. It is now off. As you can see, we'll just put everything back on, and your adaptive sound system thing is now off. Your fake engine noises will cease to exist. Putting the housing back on, um, fairly simple. You just go ahead and work your way around the corner. So I like to start with this corner. Uh, I already clipped it on so there was a sound that I heard a click. You should hear the rest fall into place. I don't know if you can hear that. And then I look over here, that last clip, everything should align. If something doesn't align, then you know um, that you probably 
put it wrong. There you go, final clip right there. And my little indicator that I like to make sure is uh, these two clips, the first two clips that I started with, I end with them and make sure that they click into place no problem. Um, so I know that everything else here is on properly. Final walk around, make sure there's hardly any play. Now I know all of my tabs have engaged and it's exactly how it was before I opened it up. And then I will put the trim back on. Again, it's your choice which side you want to start, whether you want to start from the top or the bottom, whatever is easier for you. I like to go the opposite of how I removed it, so starting with the top. Making sure everything lines up. Good firm taps. So I guess the sunlight is. There we go. So almost here. There. And if you look closely here, the edges, everything is on properly. Everything is in line properly. Got a clean edge right there, nothing's lifted, which means all of our tabs have engaged once again. And now just the glove box. Now all that's left is to put the four screws and the two bolts back, and then we can put the glove box back on. Now that my dash cam wires are in place, all we're gonna have to do is line up the two hinges with the two posts that they belong to. Once you hear a little snap real quick, we're good to go. So right there is good. I just pinch the two corners. And now that you got them back on their hinges, you should be good to go. Ta-da, do a little test to make sure it's not hitting anything. If it's ever um, hitting the edges, which I've heard happened or happens quite a lot, then it means something's not aligned properly. Um, you just go ahead and push on corners, all the corners here, make sure all your clips are engaged. And uh, yeah, there you go. Thank you for watching.